Number 34, Lauren Southern. Who is Lauren Southern? Well, she's our, what, number three woman on this list? Yeah, like, I think number two? Three, I, I believe. Well, those last last two we uh, like heard and listened to and watched, they, they, they were baby compared to this one. This one is moderately successful and popular, but the difference is she did something that the uh, alt-right didn't expect. So, let's show you. So, this is, you see I see right here, how women advance in the internationalization of internationalization. The, yes, of the far right. That's a tongue twist for some fucking reason. And y'all can see here, these people basically like, not went undercover, basically studied the far right extremist movement and why women are doing it. As y'all seen in the last uh, SWS, these people like, you know, they're, it's even more like, they're, a lot of white white people are shocked by like, damn, why is white women doing this shit? Like, I can see a man doing but why women, why do they justify it? Um, but we're here for lower and southern. So let's get to the lower and southern part. I'll read a little bit um, and then uh, we'll move to the next one. Against this backdrop, masculinity, a long established trait among extremist groups, has grown as a core of competent in, a, in the way emerged far right communities broker their identity against mainstream culture by fetishizing physical strength and traditional family values. And the contemporary far right embraces the conventional notions of masculinity and uses narratives around the reclamation, reclamation of masculinity as an important recruitment tool. Uh, and then we already talked about that before. In a cry in the contrast to the perspective, weak masculinity is identified as a defining trait of a progressive culture, with tropes of cuckoldery, cuckoldery, and effeminacy being used as a ridicule left wing men. Oh uh, yeah, y'all, that's what the word that cuck stuff come from. Shoot, they they was making fun of uh, you know these little democratic you know. Calling like liberal cucks and shit. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Liberal cucks. Right. Liberal cucks. Right. The uh, infamous being used as really. Oh, okay. Sorry. One interesting yet bizarre example of this is the so called soy boy meme, which associates progressive men with the consumption of soy products and the consumption of soy products with raised levels of estrogen. Which is true. Uh, yeah, it is true. Uh, within the context, a new wave of women are situa situating themselves within the movement, leading to a growth of communities such as trade wives, who see the rejection of feminism as a key component in red pilling. Ooh, it's their version of red pilling. All the the alt-right term of radicalization. A trend which mirrors the empowerment that Western women joining the Islamic State felt through an embracing traditional gender roles. In particular, women identify the apparent unyielding orthodoxy and hostile atmosphere against conservatives from a contemporary fem feminist culture as being driving factors for their radicalization. As prominent far-right influencers, Laura Southern summarized, and quote, I believe anyone who supports feminism is an anti-woman even if they're not consistent. And remember, this is back Conscious in, of it. this is 2016. By embracing this anti-feminist stance, individual women have found an effective mechanism to advertise their radicalism. Doing so in an overt way appears to guide the trajectory of several figureheads. Lord Southern provides a notable example of this trend, starting her activist career by publicly campaigning against feminism, promoting a campaign called Hashtag The Triggering, which was designed to provoke feminism activities, activists. Controversy has been crucial in driving digital celebrity and by embracing such contentious topic. Southern fame rocketed, providing her from, with a platform which, from which to broaden international support for the far right ideology. One of the key drivers behind the contemporary trend for internet, internet, yeah, damn, I don't know why my tongue tissing on that one. 
internalization, which can be used, which can be observed in a far right, is a certain of active counterculture, which pushes back against the mainstream liberalism, which until recently has united the Western world by identifying common enemies in the form of institutions like mass media and outgroups including both Muslims, non-whites, feminists, Europeans, and non-American not and non and North American far right communities construct a, a shared worldview which proves effective in attracting large scale global support. The crucial power of this counterculture lies in the assertion of the radical differences from the status quo. Here is the suggestion that rejection of feminism, something which is cast as sacred to many, this through the its overt and innate controversies, one of the most effective ways of establishing international far right as a turn of to the contemporary order. All right. All right. Generation identity influence and, and hijacking of Me Too. And this basically uh, breaks down how these mugs basically took Me Too and made it look like, you know, like like women, these women hate on white men and white men need to get, come up and step up and don't fall for the bull stuff the, that they say the, or you know, fake news is pushing. But yeah, that's Lord Southern. She comes from um, a hustle. She's trying to find an angle to get in, you know, get in where you fit in. So she found her angle. Go to the next one. And this is what happens next year. So the, of course, the Southern Poverty Law Center, they calling her out. Um, so Lauren Southern, the alt-right's Canadian dog whistler. And they basically talk about how she basically met up with uh, Gavin McGinnis, future SWS, um, to, you know, rouse some stuff up. Let's read, let's read a little bit. A couple hundred pro protesters showed up at the alt-right alt hate event at the universities of West Bank Auditorium. The event being protested was organized by college, college's right wing collegian, collegian, collegians for the conservative tomorrow. Student group and featured 22 year old alt right YouTube vlogger Laura Southern. 22 still spewing this stuff. One person was arrested in the protest, and the police said they broke up fighting using chemical irritants. Southern, the featured attraction for both attendees and protests, directly objects. To the any quote Nazi label, the protest organizers' flyers featured her anti-feminist, xenophobic, Islamic phobic diatribes, tiptoe at the pre precipice of outright white nationalism, while she coyly smiles at her views in a video on her YouTube channel alongside a graphic reading, "I am not a Nazi." <laughs> <laughs> She's trolling. End quote. 200 people showed up at the protest. 22-year-old Canadian girl that makes memes. Southern tweeted on the evening of the event. She followed that with SWAT team called in so I could show pictures of my fat, fat feminist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like the Proud Boys, Southern claims to reject racism while embracing the supposedly plat palatable elements of so-called alt-light, offering observers observations like black people are convicted convicted by the media that that they are living in a system where everyone's white people is doing is trying to oppress them as she told a vice reporter earlier this year okay Southern is a one-time libertarian can, 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 candidate for canadian parliament uh ain't that just like the last girl working working in politics now she just flat out running for mayor <laughs> okay but yeah the rebel. Hey, haven't we seen that before in the past? Okay. But some people. Southern. Somebody, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Ha, like I said, haven't we seen that news company in the past with some people on this list having oracles on their websites? Okay. Along with Daily Beast, <laughs> Daily Mail, I think. Hmm. Southern is a one-time Libertarian candidate for Canadian Parliament and former writer of Canadian's alt-right media hub, The Rebel, and a self-published author who is gloomed on the extremist right scene in her home country, Southern neighbor, and found internet fame and controversy while becoming a movement 
white blonde goddesses of the moment. Since Taylor Swift never returned the neo-Nazi affections. I guess she was throwing shots at Taylor Swift. Uh, Andrew Lang- Ang- Anglin, founder of the editor chief of the em- embattled neo-Nazi Daily Sun website, strenuously stren- object to the presence of females in the alt-right movement. In this manifesto published in August of this year, Angie wrote, men are sick of having things explained to them by women. It's a turnoff and it's absolutely useless. What does a woman have to offer you intellectually, motivationally, morally? Absolutely nothing. Jesus. Man, these these mangas hate women for some reason. Like, what do they have against women? We need to keep women on the sidelines, not speaking, not leading, with no official membership in anything. Perhaps this is where Lauren Stern slip, spill, splits with the neo-Nazis without women like Southern, who will take on the social justice warrior feminists. And who will the Proud Boys use the material for a monthly wank? Wow, oh, wow. Yeah, um, they apparently like from what we've seen from the rest of this, they look like. We gonna get to that. Huh? Why right there? Oh, okay. Oh, I think I'll tell you the other part. Okay, go ahead. No, like, it's safe right there. Like, she doesn't matter to my amic characters, but <laughs> she just like them and guys jerk off to her. Yeah. So this weird old white supremacist white girl may have done some can girl work as anime girls. Also, it's kind of funny how an you know, old white kind of thing for anime, you know, given as anime is from Japan. Japan has this you no know, full this rich history of far right ideologies. Yes. Uh, okay. She referenced masturbation five times, including I don't master I don't masturbate to anime kids. I dress up, okay, uh, like I say and have guys masturbate me. Before Southern launched her short live video career as a politician, she first attracted attention with her debut video, The Rebel, entitled "Why Am I Not a Feminist?" In April 2015, in quote, "Did you know that every year more American men are raped than women?" She asked on the video page, referring to prison rape. She mentioned domestic violence against men. 80% of suicides are men. Before asking if feminism really is the movement dedicated to equality, shouldn't feminists be speaking out against these and other examples of obvious inequality? That sounds that sound you didn't hear was a dog whistle from Alan Alang and its ilk. Later then in the summer 2015, after Southern launched a candidacy for parliament. Whoa, these little white supremacist girls right running, boy. Man, they just love Taiwan's for office. See, Canada, and they talking about can, these Canucks are friendly. Like, and, like you Canadians so liberal. Like, no the fuck you guys are not. Um, She appeared in the Vancouver's shit walk protest. The name inspired by Toronto's policeman who said in 2011 women should avoid dressing like shit to avoid sexual... Like, I guess, I guess he said just like shit. Just like shit? Yeah, I guess. Like, what? I guess sluts. Maybe dressed like sluts? But why would they, they blow out sluts? I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm assuming it gotta be sluts. Um, to avoid sexual assault. Carrying a sign that, that read, there is no rape culture in the West. Okay. So she's saying that there's no rape no, culture. No, she didn't say that it's oh. the people. Oh, did? Yeah, huh? Yeah. No, not ain't her. The Canadian Liber- Libertarian Party suspected her her candidacy. Oh, maybe she did say that shit. Uh, her candidacy, but she was res- resistant after supporters, including Breitbart, objected. Southern received 535 votes in the election. Not quite 1% of the vote. <laughs> Less than a year later, Southern returned to Vancouver to an event where pro- Eugenics, anti-Semitic, alt-right figure, fellow wannabe politician, August Soul Invictus. A, a feature member of the list. Also, you notice how he has a Roman name? It's kind of like, like a kind of thing of these people using these emperors and these dictators for their names. Yeah. Uh, was supposed to speak. Invictus was running for a Florida Senate seat and was prevented from entering Canada at the border, missing his own event. Servant, arg- 
Suddenly argued with the protest at events showing up in Canada national media. Once again, when one of them dumped a bottle of what appeared to be fox urine on her, <laughs> on her head. They, they made tell so fox piss on a bitch. <laughs> In December 2016, published her Palmedical book, Barbarians, How the Baby Boomers, Immigration, and Islam Screwed My Generation, with the blurb by Ann Coulter, reading, By this book before liberals ban it, across the cover, it's a collection of extreme right dog whistles, we should put down her to the list. title. We should put her on the list. We should have, but Ann Coulter ain't shit. And culture ain't on YouTube. <laughs> that, that bitch still thinking TV is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fossil mass bitch. Anywho, speaking of the left, uh, I, nah, we can stop right there. Yeah, we got we, we got so much shit to show y'all. Let's move to the next one. And this is a sneak preview of uh, what's about to come. <laughs> Lauren Southern has been ousted, outed as Jewish and a race traitor. She is in full damage control mode, deleting any negative comments. Huh, who's she on hmm. top of? Who's she jumping on like that? Huh, okay. And this is, um, doing Charlottesville. These white boys, they was all on Discord talking about, you know, they basically was telling their damn self. Pretty much organizing the hate rallies. Mm-hmm, and this is some of the stuff they was talking about. And talking about how, if you're a member of the Identity Europa Alt-Right to Distance Worker Party, Vanguard America, League of the, the South, Identity Dixie, or any organization I failed to name, please DM me. I set up a private organization specific, specific channel, specific channel so members in each group can coordinate and socialize with each other. So they, they were all working together at Charlottesville. Remember, remember what happened in Charlottesville, y'all? They unite the right. It all led to a white girl getting hit by a car. <laughs> Not to laugh, but that was fucked up. Um, but we trying to get the lower southern. All right, here we go. On this curse, sir, far right militants also discussed bringing more guns to to the next rally. Blame the local police and government for being communist. It's discussed doxing anti-fascist protests that they're, they're targeting. Said that they were recent events as the beginning of the Civil War. They want to start and speculate how if Laura Southern showed up, they would fight amongst each other and declaim her as her as war their bride. war bride. End quote. These these what these white boys were saying and thinking about her. Like they, they didn't saw her as a human. They saw her as a object to claim to take away. As a trophy wife. Because she speak that racist shit that they like. Let's move on to the next one. So basically, she was at the alt-right movement. And the stuff she speak and say on YouTube, man. Like, uh, yeah, these these white people, boy, they, they walk around thinking no one's going to G-check them or stop them. But other white people, you know, they got to understand. A lot of these white people, they claim, you know, they're Jewish and all this other stuff, so... They don't want to hear you spewing that white supremacist shit on their platform. So, of course, some people are going to stop you. So, they stopped her. And this is her explanation why they cut down her damn Patreon and all this other shit. Hey, everyone. Okay, so as you may know by now, uh, Patreon has kicked me off of their website, essentially eviscerating the majority of my income. You may be wondering, what could the reason for doing this be? Well, let me just read you their email. Hi Lauren, my name is Max and I'm a member of the trust and safety team at Patreon. Here at Patreon, we believe in freedom of speech. We are creating a platform that empowers creators to share and debate ideas. When ideas cross into action though, we sometimes must take a closer look at what our creators are doing with- See, they knew, they heard, they knew. Come on now, she acting trying to act brand new, and then we just have another uh, person on this list who got their picture and took away doing the same stuff mm -hmm. and acting shocked by. I'm just using my freedom of speech. Okay, but they see its actions being held after you say some shit. The funds they earn through Patreon. It appears that you are cur also note um what suggested um video in the corner. 
that that just shows uh, once again it shows what type of people who watch these videos currently raising funds in order to take part in activities that are likely to cause loss of life we have therefore decided to remove your page from patreon and paid out your final balance of 95 dollars to you <laughs> <laughs> All that she only got paid ninety five dollars on Patreon. <laughs> we understand that this will come as a disappointment. Please know that we have come to this decision after a long review process and will not consider an appeal. Thank you for your understanding. Raising funds in order to take part in activities that are likely to cause loss of life. That's a pretty freaking incredible claim there, Patreon. That, that should take some pretty incredible evidence behind it, shouldn't it? Uh, but what did you provide as evidence? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely freaking nothing. Now, I assume that you guys are talking about the Defend Europe mission, a mission that firstly, I am not actually taking part in. I was planning on joining them on the boat initially just to record everything, something that hundreds of journalists and reporters from all across the political spectrum were begging to do, but I decided a professional crew member with more experience should take my place instead. Secondly, not a dime that I got Man, hey, bitch, we don't want your born ass directing shit. We want some real ass shit. <laughs> from Patreon went towards the Defend Europe mission. All of the money I get from Patreon goes towards my initial stated goals, which were entirely within the Patreon guidelines. And thirdly, and probably the most important point, even if I were taking part in the Defend Europe mission, and I were raising money for it through Patreon, it is not a mission with any intentions to cause the loss of life. She was funding it. She just told her so. In fact, that is quite a slanderous statement because the intentions are the exact opposite. For those who don't know, Defend Europe is a mission which has three main goals. One, fact-finding to expose the alleged collusion between NGOs and human traffickers, two, to sink empty hazardous rafts so they can't be used by traffickers again, a task that NGOs should be doing, and three, to answer distress calls and provide aid to migrants who need it and call the closest port for aid instead of transporting people to the furthest point in Europe, which the Italian government are asking the NGOs to stop doing. The mission is literally working entirely within maritime laws, and if any of that changed, and if their mission was to harm people or to ignore people in distress, I would disavow it immediately. The reality is, though, that Patreon has no interest in any of that. They have no interest in the truth. They've already stated that their shutdown of my account is not up for review and that they're not doing this for ideological reasons, even though it is quite clear that that's exactly what they're doing. If you want to go ahead and prove me wrong, Patreon, reinstate my account. What type of fuck shit is that? <laughs> what type of fucking mind play is that bullshit? Trying to ask for them trying to demand them to restore her account knowing that she is doing fuck shit this motherfucker she thinks she's doing reverse fly college on a damn corporation <laughs> silly silly <laughs> rabbit that she gets a number in, a, in their company straight up because i am doing none of the things that you've accused me of doing and if you truly do have concerns about people raising money that may lead to the loss of life then why do you keep pages up like It's Going Down, a radical left-wing organization that promote violence against police? It doesn't quite add up, does it? Oh wait, it does actually add up. It's because you guys at Patreon actually have employees that quite publicly support Antifa and the entire letter- Uh-uh, you know what Antifa mean? People who defend black people. You sent me was- complete and utter bullshit basically and you know what it's your company you guys can do what you want but just be honest about it because this isn't about you guys appreciating freedom of speech or ideology it's about the people on your platform having the right ideology now to say i'm angry bitch you on youtube is a bit of an understatement friends of mine are being stalked and beat up i'm being banned censored and attacked everywhere i go i'm getting demonetized for being offensive and most of my and makes a bad her fan base is cornball white boys who can't get no pussy and they think um bigging her up big big making her head big she gonna you know fuck them her fan base jacks off to pictures of her and Catherine cosplay and other anime girls that's her fan base 
fucking virgins who are too scared to talk to women. <laughs> Income has been taken away. And basically, the entire establishment, corporations, government, and media is against me and anyone who dares share my opinions. Hell, if Facebook is scared to ban me again because of the backlash... This bitch just say the Italian government is against her. Man, get the fuck out of here, girl. Man, you, you ain't that damn big like that. Come on now. You only got big one of gangs on these virgin-ass white boys. That's, that's it. They got last time... Oh, they just go ahead and ban the people who share my content. It's been a hell of a yep. ride. But I will say I... Coming soon, Invictus. August Invictus. I can't stay mad for long because the whole thing is actually a bit hilarious when you really think about it. What they're doing here is they're trying to tire me out. I had people weeks ago telling me that they like my content, but I need to cool it with my opinions because Patreon was going to shut me down and I wasn't going to be able to do what I do for much longer. And... That just so happens to be exactly what these corporate government progressives want. They want me to cool down. They want me to be a docile little travel vlogger that smiles and tells you everything is doing dandy. Trust your government, trust their initiatives, buy this product, like and subscribe. And despite everything that has happened to me and all of their attempts to shut me up and others up, I'm still doing what I'm doing and people are still sticking around and watching it. I have more support than ever right now. My friends who are also being demonetized and banned are still going. And people are after my PayPal. They're after my YouTube. I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know how long I'll get to keep these accounts. But the thing is, they can keep shutting me down wherever I go. And I'll keep popping up wherever they're not looking. My content will be re-uploaded. More free speech supporting sites will be created. They're not going to be able to get rid of me. It's going to be a constant wild chase for them to shut down ideas that threaten theirs. And I'm not going to let them catch their breath. And even if they do, even if they do manage to shut me up, they ban me on everything and I have no way to ever share my message again with or without income. It doesn't matter because people can even kill me. It, it, it matters to her. Don't, don't, don't let this girl lie to you. She is triggered. But they can't kill an idea. And after me, more people with dangerous ideas will rise up and keep speaking and take on that torch of free speech. So am I angry? Not so much anymore. In fact, it's kind of hysterical because progressives, you can keep trying, but you pushed your luck too far. And now the culture is headed in the other direction and you are desperately clawing to shut up all those against you. And the reality is there's nothing you can do about it. Anyways, to those who have been supporting me through the high and the low points, I can't thank you enough. Girl, nobody give a shit about you. Them white boys thirsty. They think they can fuck you and you ain't never gonna fuck them. As they said, she, you was laying up with a mother. <laughs> you was laying up with a person you hate. On, on to the next one. And y'all see, she lost her Patreon. So she needed to figure out another hustle. What's the next hustle? Making a documentary. So let's make a documentary. It's called Farmlands. Came out in 2018. Y'all see the year? All right. So what, what is Farmlands about? Let, 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 let's let her explain. What the fuck farmland is? Ever since I started my work in politics, I have heard stories and rumors of something sinister happening in South Africa. Oh shit, she for the cape for us. Okay, okay, something happened in South Africa. What's going on? I was regularly sent images and videos claiming there was a white Oh. oh, I thought she was going to be for black people. No, it's a white genocide going on in Africa. Oh, oh, oh. she the one who started this stuff. Okay, so explain, what is this white genocide in Africa? Genocide going on right now. As a journalist, I have learned to never take anything at face value, to second guess and question it all. But I- Yep, that's what we're doing with you, bitch also believe that there is never smoke without fire. This is what makes South Africa so intriguing because depending on your outlook, it is either a paragon of multiculturalism and social justice or a powder keg. This bitch said multicultural, a powder keg of a genocide against white pe population? 
all, anybody who white in Africa, they fucking colonized their dog. Don't let these people try to fool you. With a genocide against the white population ready to erupt into an all out race. How's it a fucking race war in Africa? See what I mean? Shouldn't be no white folks living her. Jesus fuck. War. After doing some digging, I found an overwhelming mess of conflicting information about South Africa. Political turmoil, disappearing government funds, widespread corruption, and the sense that those responsible are never quite brought to justice. I found stories about the most gruesome murders imaginable with almost no statistical proof of their existence. She did heavy reporting. Look, look at that shot and then angle. She's heavy <laughs> reporting. I tried to put the pieces together, but there were just too many missing. With the left wing and establishment media calling the far murders a non-issue. This propaganda, these women are doing this propaganda, boy. Man, doing all this extra shit just to fool, fool these white boys. Yeah. And praising the Rainbow Nation and the far right predicting a civil war. I thought surely the truth must lie somewhere in the middle. The White Genocide Movie. And you know what? We don't even need to show y'all no more. Y'all see what the fuck it's about. And you know every person you talk to is white. <laughs> every evidence you try to get from someone is from a white person. They finally get to a black person. But that black person that god dang sell out for, for whatever country or government run whatever they he work for. This lady ain't nothing, man. Let's keep this ball rolling. And then, a few day, years later, I mean, years, what, a year, two years later? Yeah. The Atlanta, they makes a documentary. Trying to figure out what is going on with this alt-right movement. As you see right there in the lower right-hand corner, it's called White Noise. And this is actually a excerpt from White Noise. Um, what has she been up to in these last couple of years since, you know, the Unite the Right rally and all that other stuff? So let's see. some scary experiences some heroes that have fallen for me I gonna say heroes who's falling for me uh oh uh oh, uh -oh. Who, who are we gonna find out coming soon I've certainly gotten a shorter fuse for this non nonsense of everything is women's fault. it's okay to be white fault what flag is that is that a flag it's, it's what language is that? Sexual assault is a very real thing. There certainly are power dynamics within the business world where women have to be careful. This is something that I've really learned is the only one that can really protect me is me. And I think women are having to learn a lot of hard lessons. When it, when it comes down to it, you are, you are sometimes your first and last defense. You did, though, start your career with a lot of anti-feminist commentary. Do you ever have moments where you look back at that early work and say, maybe you played a role in that mentality? Well, the answer to the question. Do you, you think maybe you, if you put some fuel on a fire? That's what you say. Hmm. I don't disagree with what anything that I've done. I think I've been honest, but... Uh, the, the lack of nuance and qualifiers and extra explanations can really hurt a debate when people interpret what you're saying differently than how you wanted it. See, she, see, and this is she, she caught. She was saying all that stuff about feminism and women need to be doing this, but little she know, men was taking her shit and saying, hey, that means you bitch stay in the kitchen. <laughs> see, that's what you get. You got these white boys who ain't never heard no, don't, and stop. 
do whatever the hell they want and say what the hell they want. And you sitting here, uh, what what is what is it called when someone's like an addict and you oh you're in the enabling. You're in enabling these white supremacists. To be um, interpreted. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, so sad. Oh. Okay, now on to the next one. And the great betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Atlantic also did uh, another like article about her, asking her uh, about the alt-right and all that stuff, how she got into it. And the article is called, Why the Alt-Right Most Famous Woman Disappeared. Lauren Southern, who, sorry, Lauren Southern could spew racist propaganda like no other, but the, the men around her were better at one thing, trafficking in ugly misogyny. Gavin McGinnis took a swig of whiskey from a bottle on his talk show on a set bar before bringing Lauren Southern on stage. It was June 2018. In, in Washington, D.C., Southern was only in her early 20s, but she had already emerged as an alt-right most influ influential woman. Her fellow guests were all men, an Army veteran, a Washington think tanker, and a radio shock jock. There was no chair for her. The men rushed to reshuffle. End quote. This is a patriarchy right here. Southern bantered. Men get seats at the table. And McGinnis is the founder of the Vice News and the Proud Boys, an all-male neo-fascist group. We'll talk about him later. McGinnis watched stonily as Southern joined the men. End quote. Are you going to give, you're going to have kids and give birth? Or are you going to be, are you going to be a mother? He asked her. End quote. Then I'll give them your. Then I'll give give. Then I'll give them my seat. The men laughed, and Southern submitting to the last 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 minute menstruation of makeup artists laugh along. Just one of the guys with long stick, straight blonde hair, and off the shoulder flora print dress. McGinnis wasn't quite finished yet. End quote. If you're not making humans, then fucking stand up, bitch. Whoa. Jeez. Jesus. Damn. This dude, boy, coming soon. <laughs> End quote. I'm uh, oh, sorry. End quote. Southern, who was joining him at the talk about her documentary, Farmlands, as you just saw, which focused on the alleged persecution of white farmers in South Africa, gasped in fake horror. Southern reporting of the farmlands had rippled through right-wing media. Trump would order Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to, in quote, close study the issue. And McGinnis, now finished with his commentary on gender roles, had Southern discuss her revisionist, revisionist history. In the 19th century, the Zulu people took the land that is now South Africa from another ethnic group, she said. And therefore, blacks are just as responsible for apartheid as white. Okay. Okay. Alright, this lady tripping. You know, we need some music for this shit. Yes, continue this. Be uh yeah, we already know about that. Uh, the Zulu people took land from a South African from another ethnic group. She said that therefore blacks are just responsible for apartheid as whites. When McGinnis brought the conversation close to home, noting that white self hatred is a rampant that can't even find South African wine at the, his local bar. Southern, Southern added, the word racist just means nothing more, nothing to me anymore. She said, it's been so overused, I just have no respect for the term. Mm. Mm. Southern finished on set and ordered an Uber to the airport for her flight home to Toronto, to Toronto. Partway through the ride, her phone rang. It was McGinnis. Southern listened to him closely for a few seconds. End quote, we shouldn't be talking about this at all, she said, laughing uncomfortably. Then her face tightened, end quote. See, the thing is, because my moral compass tells me you have a wife and kids, it's not even in my realm of consideration. McGinnis, according to Southern, had just reiterated an offer he had made the night before when she'd been out with him, a group of, of other far right friends, end quote. You know what, want, you, you, you know you want to fuck me. I'm your childhood hero. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Hey, what she said in the documentary? <laughs> what she said in that doc? What she said in the documentary? How they fucking be women as sex objects. If my even my heroes wanna fuck me. <laughs> okay. 
when reached for comment, McGinnis stated, as a married man, I have never sexually proposed Lowland Southern or any other woman. Oh, see, you gotta, you gotta keep preaching that proud Christian married man. With a grimace, Southern hustled him off the phone. She was speechless for the moment. Send, send help, she said, feebly Feebly. help. By the time Southern went to Matt McGinnis' show, I had been following her for nearly a year. Um, the Atlantic, uh, they just talking about how they found her and all that shit. But yeah, see, she, she basically learned her lesson. The top little white supremacist, well, I'm sorry, alt-light uh, person uh, tried to hop down her and sort of fucked her up. And she ain't gonna fuck them niggas no more. But let's continue. I, I don't know what's, what the answer. That wasn't the first time she's expressed disenchantment. Oh, sorry, let me read that quote she said. Uh, hey, Danny, in your honest opinion, am I a little crazy? She texts me. Do you think I'm Im- irredeemable? I can't go back to a normal life? Huh? Oh, shit. I did, I did not know the, the answer. It wasn't the first time she expressed disenchantment with the alt-right at least parts of it but it was always hard to know what Southern was really thinking or how deeply committed she was to anything at all her misgivings mostly revolved around the harassment she re- received from the other members of her movement science of empathy for other afflicted only in intermediately you in quote you have to keep playing the game until you're out of it keep up the charade she said the day of the McGinnis taping Woo! But it seems likely that she was trying to play me as well. When I first got to know her, Southern was among YouTube's most effective and sophisticated extremists. See, I told y'all the intellectual bigots and alt-right propagandist who masqueraded as a run-of-the-mill influencer. Uh, and, and, and one June 2017 post titled Ad-Friendly Makeup Tutorial, she walks viewers through skincare routine as Letro Pop plays over a cherry-colored music. Uh, sorry, graphics. End quote. You want to use a, uh, a beauty blender and cover up all those uh, of all your face imper- imperfections. She said, all right, we're going, we're, we're looking grog. As she applies finishing touch red lipstick, her hand drips from her mouth to her cheek. F-U-C-K. She slowly writes. She switches to the left. I-S-L-A-M. She tosses back her blonde hair and smiles. Whoa. End quote. You've got this cute ad-friendly makeup look. It's f- super flirty. Her 7,000 comments all- were through it. Oh my fucking God, this girl is on fire. Gus, the faceless adv- avatar, an admirer who went by Herbert, jumped in. Trolling level elite grandmaster. Woo. That was some slick shit. Doing makeup tutorials, but also spewing anti-hate. I mean, I mean hate. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, wow. Southern, I came to learn also, was also a adept troll in person. In another YouTube video viewed nearly three million times, she pushed to the front of the crowd for sexy assault survivor and activist in June 2015 in a downtown Vancouver and, and lifts a Sharpie paint place card. End quote. There is no rape culture in the West. As a marchers protest, Southern screamed back, Go back to Africa, you will see a real rape culture. Woo! Jesus! Jane Atkinson, a former far right British European Parliament. Shit, we don't need to read no more. This lady told herself, y'all. Do we do read it anymore? Go to Atlantic, find this damn damn article. Y'all gonna be fucking not surprised. Let's move on to the next one. So, Yuki, what did we learn about Laura Southern? Um, I guess we should, we should we should be treating these episodes like you know uh, what what did we learn at the end of this episode? So what we learned about Lauren Southern? What we learned from her is that if you are a white woman who is all white and can one game one game on these men who will simple you because to them you are their Aryan queen. Yep, because she sure jumped out of it. She, she was done with that after all that uh, sexual stuff she was hearing. Y'all screwed it away. And it makes it bad. She Canadian. Who even... Once again, we got these Canadians in, trying to talk about our issues. Riling up our people in our country. Y'all so lame, boy. Y'all some treasonous motherfuckers. Y'all will listen to a damn Canadian. 
Boy, shit, we gon' man. Next week we gon' we gon' part. Um, we gon' I don't know if the next person is, is American. Hopefully the next person is American. We need some American racists. God damn, these Canadian motherfuckers ain't shit. These Canucks. These Canucks. Where can they find you? You can find me on my, on my website, you get a snowman account. You can find me on Facebook, Facebook account slash you get a snowman on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can find me, Yuki, the snowman 314. If you want to find me, I'm on YouTube at Dark Dreams Bright Ideas. I'm also on Twitter at SuperLostFan108. I'm also on Instagram at the TV Girl 108 You can find us on YouTube at Swarthy Nerd. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We see you guys and gals in the next one. Later.